Welcome back to another video. We're out here near Staten Island Airfield, not at Staten Island Airfield. And today, I wanted to talk about Formula One because the season's about to start. It is a little different than what we usually cover on this channel, but I wanted a place to document my predictions for this season, um, both with driver lineups and with just the overall layout of the grid. And I wanted a record of it, so I'm gonna publish this. It's before testing, before Drive to Survive. It's February 16th when I'm recording this. So <clears throat> if I get stuff right, I've had no <laughs> knowledge of what's going on this season. If I get stuff wrong, I had no idea what went on in testing. So if it turns out Ferrari is bullet fast and they win the entire championship hands down, had no idea. <laughs> but I wanted to give my thoughts and predictions just from what I've seen of the car launches, what I've seen of the drivers, and what my guess is for what will happen this season. So starting off, I wanna talk about the driver lineups because I think that's the most interesting part for a lot of people who are not necessarily car nerds, who are really in it more for the personalities throughout the sport. And I don't think there's gonna be a ton of shakeup this year. The shakeup that's going to happen, I think is going to be fairly, fairly, uh, I don't wanna say controversial, but I think two things are gonna happen, or three things are gonna happen. I think there's gonna be an interesting dynamic at Aston Martin. Uh, Fernando Alonso historically doesn't play well with other drivers. Now he's driving alongside the team owner's son. So I think it is a recipe for disaster and one of two things is gonna happen. Lance Stroll is going to exit the sport, which I think is unlikely, or Fernando Alonso is going to be politely asked to retire his numbers. <laughs> um, I don't think either one is necessarily guaranteed, but I am betting that this year there is going to be some extreme spiciness when it comes to Aston Martin's driver lineup. The other place I think you're going to see some shakeup is actually Red Bull. I don't think Sergio Perez is going to be there long term. I think this year, depending on how it goes, may be his last. Verstappen is not a fan of Sergio Perez, it seems, especially after the end of last season. And Sergio Perez doesn't seem like a huge fan of Max Verstappen. I don't think they're gonna give him the car that he needs, Sergio Perez needs, to win a world championship. I think he's just gonna kinda get sick, fed up with it, and want to exit. If he does exit, I think he's gonna be replaced by Daniel Ricardo at Red Bull, and I think he may go over and replace Fernando Alonso or Lance Stroll at Aston Martin, which is interesting because he was originally at Racing Point, which was bought by, uh, was it Lawrence Stroll, who then remade it into Aston Martin. So I think the uh, that driver lineup is gonna come around full circle. You're gonna see I'm gonna go Fernando Alonso, exit Aston Martin. Sergio Perez takes his place. Daniel Ricardo takes Sergio Perez's place. Beyond those two big moves, I don't think there's gonna be a lot else that changes. I think Mercedes is gonna stick with their drivers. I think Ferrari is gonna stick with their drivers. I think, uh, again, I think Toro Rosso and McLaren are gonna stay the same, uh, especially if they get a good car under Lando Norris. The only other one that I think may have some possible volatility is Sauber. Uh, I think Valtteri Bottas has a long-term contract, so that's why I'm saying most likely no changes there. Between Guan Yu Zhou and Valtteri Bottas, I think Valtteri Bottas is kind of coming to the end of his Formula One uh, era, even though he's still young. It just doesn't feel like he quite has that same uh, aggression and fire that some of the other drivers have. And so I think it may be time for him to swap out for somebody different. With the driver lineups out of the way, let's talk about the teams themselves and where I think they're gonna finish constructors wise. Before we get into this, I just wanna say that I'm a massive Danny Ricardo fan, massive Lewis Hamilton fan, and also a massive McLaren fan. So take anything that I say in this video with a grain of salt. I feel like that's important to throw out there off the front because that may influence some of my predictions and guesses. Let's talk about the teams. And I think that is way more interesting because I think there's gonna be a lot of volatility this year. I think you're finally gonna see Red Bull crack. Uh, they've been on a tear this year. They've had significantly reduced aero time where Mercedes, Ferrari, the rest have had significantly more. 
uh, they're going to have significant scrutiny on their budget. Outside the top three, I think, is where it's going to get a little interesting because you've got new drivers at new teams. You've got three rookies in different teams this year. <clears throat> and you have a lot of just changing, a lot of variability. So I think it's going to be a pretty big shakeup in the rest of that field. I think you're going to see McLaren score really well on points, not necessarily because Oscar Piastri, unless he ends up being a breakout star, but because Lando Norris is just so damn consistent. So that's why I think you're probably going to see McLaren end up in kind of fourth position, followed by Alpine, because that car was just way too good at the end of the season not to have taken another step forward. Pierre Gasly is a really great driver. Ocon was really showing pace, especially against Fernando Alonso uh, last year. Aston Martin, I think they're going to take a step forward too, uh, so I'm going to put them there at number six, followed by number seven, Haas. This is a pretty bold prediction, but you've got two really experienced drivers in that car. That car was showing some great pace uh, last season, so if they could continue to push that development forward and Hulkenberg and uh, Magnussen really just show up and show out, I think number seven is absolutely possible. From there, rounding out the bottom, I think you're gonna see Alfa Romeo end up in eighth, because again, Botas uh, is pretty consistent. Guan Yu Zhou is showing some real potential, followed by Aston Martin in ninth. Uh, even though, who? yeah, who's gonna put, uh, ooh, ah, uh, no. Nah. Oh. Okay, I think I messed up. I'm gonna actually put um, the Toro Rosso. Ugh. No, you know what? No, Toro Rosso, ninth place. Uh, I think Toro Rosso is going to have a real rough year because they've got two rookies on their squad. Uh, not two rookies. They've got uh, Sonoda, who's kind of still a rookie. He's still very young in his career. And then they're going to have a legitimate uh, newbie on their team as well. I think that's going to lead to a lot of learning uh, and a lot of mistakes made. And I think even though that car is going to perform realistically up in that top five, it's just not going to have the consistency to actually put it where it needs to be. Uh, so that's why I'm putting them ninth. And finally, in 10th, Aston Martin, because I don't care how good Fernando Alonso is. I just think with Lance Stroll and Fernando, there's going to be some team dynamic issues. There's going to be some friction. And that's just going to end up resulting in a lot of missed points, a lot of questionable finishes. And again, I don't see them really, really setting the world on fire this year. So call it what it is, but that's my guess. <laughs> With all that said, thank you for joining me on this little bit of a different video. Uh, we're going to return next week to our normal talk of RC, technology, quads, all the rest of that stuff. As always, affiliate links for the usual stuff I use to make these videos and my FPV stuff, check down in the description below. Thank you for joining me on this video. Leave in your comments your predictions, where are drivers going to move, what teams are going to finish. Give me your finishing order. We'll check back in 2024 to see how we all did. And with all that said, thank you for joining me on this video. It's been wonderful. Catch you in the next one. Bye.